Friends, I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm sharing four dump and go crock pot recipes. I can't say they're three ingredients or four ingredients, but they're not much more. But I'm gonna show you how you can take those couple extra steps, couple extra pantry staples, and really bump up the flavor on your crock pot dishes. So let's get to it. Today we're gonna do some crock pot zesty barbecue chicken. I've sprayed my crock pot with some nonstick spray and I'm going to put in here some frozen chicken tenderloins. This is about almost two pounds. These were some fresh chicken tenderloins. and I realized I was not going to get them used up. So I just put them in a freezer bag and throw them in the freezer. I knew they were going to stick together, but that's fine. It'll all cook apart in here. I knew I'd probably just throw them in the crock pot and do something with them. Now let's mix up our sauce that goes over the top. I'm using one cup of barbecue sauce. I'm just using some Kraft Sweet Honey Barbecue. Use whatever your favorite is. Then putting in half a cup of a zesty Italian dressing. You want the prepared kind in the bottle. Putting in a fourth a cup of brown sugar. This could definitely be a four ingredient dump and go. You could stop right here, but I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of a Worcestershire sauce. I'm right here adding things, and I have it, and I know it makes it just a whole lot better, so why not just throw it in? Four ingredients are great, but five makes it even better. Now we're just going to pour that right over top of this chicken. Pop that lid on there, and I'm going to cook mine on low for about three to four hours. Now that we've got our chicken going in the crock pot, I'm just going to make some coleslaw and let it sit, and I'm just using some pre-shredded bag slaw mix. And I've used the wrong bowl, I think. <laughs> I thought it would fit better. We're gonna make this work. This is gonna be a full bowl of slaw. And that was a 16 ounce bag. I'm gonna start with half a cup of mayonnaise. Once your slaw has set, you may want to add more. You may want to adjust your seasoning some, but if you put too much at the beginning, you're just stuck with soupy slaw. I like just a little bit of sugar in mine. This is a tablespoon, and that is not much for a big bowl of slaw. Then I do a half a teaspoon of black pepper and a teaspoon of salt. I do like a little bit of lemon in mine. I just do a little under a tablespoon of lemon juice. Then I also add in about a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar and just mix away. Once you get it all mixed up, you just wanna cover it and chill it in the fridge. I made mine early cause I like mine to sit a long time, but at least a couple hours. Okay, it's been a day. My barbecue chicken has actually gone five hours. <laughs> but those things happen, so we know it's done. Let's see what we got down in here. Got quite a bit of liquid. I think I'm gonna get some of that out and then we'll get our chicken all shredded. I'm just gonna use a little measuring cup and scoop a lot of this out. I just don't want my barbecue to be really liquidy, but I am going to save it because we may end up putting a little of it back in. This little meat chopper tool, I use this when I'm browning up ground beef. I use it to shred stuff. I use it for everything. You can see what a good job it did just pulling that chicken, shredding it up. I'm going to take just a little bit of the juice that we had and pour it right back over the top. Then I'm gonna put the lid on this and let it sit here for about 30 more minutes on low and it will get all like absorbed in there and it will get sticky and caramely and you can always add more of this, just hang on to it. Just gonna mix that in, I think that looks perfect. Like I said, keep that juice. You can always add a little bit more in. I'm going to put the lid back on and let it sit here on low for about 30 minutes while I get the rest of the stuff together. We love barbecue with our baked beans. Sometimes I'll even just put a little barbecue down in here and stir it in. It makes it real good. And Bush's beans, I love it because you always get a little piece of bacon in here. I think we've talked about this before here. Nobody ever, ever eats this piece of bacon 
but we're always mad if it's not in there. And magically, a couple hours later, the coleslaw just condenses, give it a good stir, and I always give it a little taste. It was perfect. Just the right amount of mayonnaise and all the seasonings. I absolutely love this little zesty barbecue. It is so quick, so easy. It turns out every single time, and I love it with this fresh, cold coleslaw and some good old canned bushes baked beans. A quick, easy dinner that is delicious and pleases your family. I wanted to pause just a second and tell you about HungryRoot.com. I recently learned of them when they reached out to work with me. I was so excited and I want to thank Hungry Root for sponsoring today's video. Hungry Root is a personalized tech enabled grocery service. They make it easy to eat healthy. You tell them just a little bit about yourself. Then each week Hungry Root delivers fresh groceries along with recipes to put your food to use straight to your door. That means you spend less time planning, shopping, and cooking and more time enjoying the food you love. Start by taking a short fun quiz sharing how you you like to eat, whether you're trying to make healthy choices or find some new recipes. Sometimes I get busy working at home and I skip breakfast. By the time lunch comes, I grab anything I can find to eat. So my goal is to find some healthy, ready-to-eat breakfast items and some little or no prep healthy lunches. Hungry Root sends personalized weekly deliveries filled with healthy groceries and 10-minute recipes right to your doorstep. When your delivery arrives, you can mix and match the groceries with what you have on hand or you can use the easy recipes that they put together for you. You can edit your weekly deliveries, choose exactly what you want to receive. I'm a salty snacker and when I saw all the variety of snacks they had to offer, I had to edit my order to try some more of those for sure. Or you can just let Hungry Root choose for you. The more you shop and cook with Hungry Root, the more the personalized engine learns what you like. And boy have they learned what I like. I can't tell you how tasty these recipes are. The ingredients are fresh and bright and they are so quick and easy to prepare. And best of all, Hungry Root has provided my viewers with an amazing offer. The first 100 people to use my code MAMAMALE40 will get 40% off your first grocery order with Hungry Root. Use the link in the show notes or go to HungryRoot.com and use code MAMAMALE40 to get 40% off. Be sure to check out the link below and thank you Hungry Root for sponsoring today's video. Today we're going to make some French dip sandwiches in the crock pot. It just takes a very few simple ingredients and I've got about a two and a half pound chuck roast and this thing still pretty much froze solid. <laughs> I put it from the freezer into the refrigerator yesterday, but that's okay. The crock pot is so forgiving. I cook things from frozen in here a lot. So let's get it started. First things first, give that crock pot a little spray just to keep things from sticking. I'm gonna put this huge roast in here, and this two and a half pound roast is just perfect for this size crock pot for me. And I'm just going to season this one side with some black pepper, no salt, because all these soups have quite a bit of sodium in them. This one's truly a dump and go today. We're gonna to put in one can of condensed beef broth, one can of beef consomme, and one can of French onion soup. I'm also gonna put in about a third of a cup of red wine vinegar. If you had red wine, that's perfect. I don't, so I'm using red wine vinegar. You could also use red grape juice or even pomegranate juice. It gives you sort of that same flavor. If you had time to sear your meat, you can definitely do that. I just don't have time today, but it makes a beautiful color to it. And you got all that grease that you can put down in here, you know, to start cooking. But honestly, it cooks up just fine just like it is, true dump and go. And I am gonna cook mine on high today. It can go as long as I need it to go. The longer it sets, the more tender this is gonna pull apart. But since mine's frozen, I am gonna put it on high just to give it the kick start and get it cooking good and hard. My roast cooked up about six hours on high, and like I said, the longer and harder the better on a chuck roast. It is just falling apart tender. Now, I do like to go through my roast and pick out the big pieces of fat. Nobody really wants to eat that, but you can see how these two forks just pull this apart, and it is so good. 
Again, it was just me and Patrick here tonight. So I put ours on the sub rolls and I just loaded up one side with some provolone cheese. Then I just loaded it up with some of this roast. I put some provolone cheese back over the top of the roast and we put this in the broiler just long enough to melt this cheese. Topped these with a little bit of mayonnaise if you wanted some horseradish sauce or if you wanted to saute up some onions and green peppers, that would be beautiful too. You can make it as fancy or as simple as you want. Now I do use my reserve juice to dip in like au jus. I couldn't find my little ramekins, but you know what? These salsa containers worked just fine. We ain't too fancy around here. This is a very easy crock pot recipe. This is all you need. Plus, I went ahead and put about two pounds of chicken in my crock pot. First thing we're gonna do is just take one envelope of your favorite taco seasoning and sprinkle it across your chicken. Then I'm taking this little four ounce can of diced green chilies, not draining or anything, just dumping it all right on the top. Last step for right now is taking one can of Rotel. I'm not draining this. And I've just recently found this lime and cilantro kind and I am excited to try it. What we love about a dump and go crock pot recipe is you dump it in, stick the top on, and you're good to go. I'm gonna cook it on high for about four to six hours. I'm heading to Costco today and I'm gonna let the crock pot do all of the work. When we get back, we will add just a few more little things when this is done to make it absolutely delicious. Okay, it's been eight hours. <laughs> we went to Costco, we just had a really fun day. So let's see what we've got here. Normally, I try to get all the liquid out, but you know what, there's not much liquid. I'm just gonna go in here with my meat masher and start shredding this up. I've got it turned over to warm now, but if I feel like when I shred this up that it's too much liquid, you can just put it on low or high and it'll cook some of it out. It ain't no big deal. Crock pots are very forgiving. Look how beautiful that is and I wish that you could smell it. That's just another thing I love about the crock pot. You can put something in here pretty much. There are a few recipes you have to watch, you know, that they're going to be done and get overdone in a short amount of time. But when you throw chicken and stuff like this in here, Man, you can just do whatever you want to do for the day and let it go. And I just don't ever know what I might get into. <laughs> so that's perfect for me. Now I'm going to take this salsa con queso. And I'm going to put about a cup, maybe a little less in here. Let's see what we got there. Let's do half that jar. And we're just going to stir this in. That is a beautiful, beautiful sight right there. I'm just going to put the lid on this and leave it on low and I'm going to top up some toppings and then I'm going to show you something neat I'm going to try tonight. Never done it before. I'm going to try something new that I saw. Got my pan heating. I'm going to spray it a little bit because I just don't want to take any chances here. And I'm going to start with some Monterey Jack cheese and I'm just going to put me a little round of it right here. Then I'm gonna take this tortilla that has the end cut off of it for some reason. And I'm gonna smush it down on there. Now let's get a little bit of our queso chicken on here. Let's just do a little bit more. Then what is supposed to happen is that the cheese should like be able to be lifted up and adhere to the outside of this tortilla so you're gonna have like a fried cheese flour tortilla. Little soft taco. We'll see if it works. I might be about to make a big old mess. I think I forgot to say, I have my skillet on medium heat. It's killing me. I don't know what's going on under there. But let's try. Oh, is it working? Maybe, kinda, sorta. Maybe I didn't wait long enough. Let's. Let's put it back down. I might have just messed it up. I can't stand it. Let's put it over. 
Oh yeah, yeah, I think I just didn't let it go long enough. Get on there, cheese. Okay, let's see if we can turn it. Looks like we got a little cheese burning on that side. Oh, oh yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, now I know. I just didn't let it set long enough. I'm so excited. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, I think we got it now. I think maybe I used too much cheese. Maybe I should do a thinner layer. And I'm gonna blot that grease up. And I forgot out in the freezer, I had some of this queso quesadilla cheese. We're gonna use it on the next one. Okay, let's see what I can do this time. Actually, I am gonna finish off this Monterey Jack cheese. And oh, it's sizzly now. Let's spread it out just a little. Quickly grab another tortilla, squish it onto it, chicken, check. Okay, now my skillet totter, I think we can do it. Guys, that was perfect. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, let's take a look at the first side again. Oh, look at that. Friends, thank you so much for just being here for any silly old thing that I want to try. I don't know why I thought this would be so awesome, but it really was. This is just what's fun about cooking. This is what I like to do with my family. Just silly, fun, different ways of trying things to break up the same old, same old routine. This was delicious. They're great on their own, even if you don't cheese fry your shells. I hope you enjoy this one. We're gonna make a crock pot lasagna, lazy man lasagna, crock pot ravioli. I've heard it called a lot of things, and I've seen it with just these three ingredients. People wanna flex with like three ingredient dump and go crock pot meals. You can do this, you can but everybody's got seasonings and things like that and like i said if three ingredients is good and it is you know four or five's gonna be even better i'm starting by browning up a pound of ground beef and i'm gonna go ahead and get up some of this grease while the meat's still cooking because i actually want to leave a little bit of this grease in here it's going to give it a really good flavor all right, while this is cooking up, I'm just going to throw in a pretty nice little spoonful of garlic. I'm going to use some Italian seasoning, probably about a tablespoon, a little more. I want to give it some flavor. And then I'm using these minced onions. You can put regular onions in here. I just honestly, it's a new bottle, it's not coming out good. <laughs> um, I honestly did not have any fresh onion. I didn't have any frozen up in the freezer either. I need to stock up on onions. We're just going to cook this meat on through. And I've already got some of my grease off. And I left the little bit in here. You know, I want these seasonings to stick. I don't want to, like, drain all this flavor out that I'm just putting in here. First things first, I'm going to spray that crock pot so the stuff don't stick. Put a little extra around the top. I've got a 24 ounce jar of pasta sauce. This is Aldi's brand. Everybody brags on this. This is my first time ever using it. And I'm going to pour about half of it down here in the bottom of the crock pot. This crock pot is an oval, so I'm probably just going to do two layers in here. And honestly, I don't remember how big it is. I'll have to look it up and put it on the screen for you. But I'm just going to Put that down on the bottom, just like making a real lasagna, you wanna make sure you got sauce in the bottom. I have about a 25 ounce bag of these frozen raviolis. You leave them frozen, you don't cook them. I'm using the cheese filled because that is what we like. I'm not a big fan of the meat filled raviolis. I just, I don't like that squishy meat in there that much. I'd rather fry up some hamburger meat, have that in mind. But I do think some spinach and cheese ones would be real good in this. That's not a real even layer, but it don't matter. It's crock pot. It's going to be fine. Now I'm going to take about half this meat that I've cooked up. 
put a little layer of that in here. It's already smelling wonderful in here just from cooking that meat. Now I'm going to take about a cup of mozzarella cheese and go over this. Remember, you've got all that good ricotta cheese and stuff inside your raviolis. Also have some shredded Parmesan, and I'm just, I'm just gonna throw a little bit in there just for some extra. And these raviolis actually have ricotta, Parmesan, and Romano in them, so it's gonna be great. And now we're just gonna repeat. I always like to sprinkle just a little Italian seasoning over the top. I like a little bit of green. I'm gonna pop the top on it, and I'm gonna cook mine on low, and I'm gonna go for about three hours and check it. It might take four. We're eating this for lunch. These with the frozen raviolis in them, I don't have very good luck when I try to cook these on low all day. The raviolis are bad to get done, like especially the ones that you might see sticking out a little bit. They're bad to get a little crispy or burnt. So this is one of those that I just do for, you know, three or four hours at a time. I am so hungry and this is smelling so good. I got busy and it's been more like four hours. It is perfect. See what I'm saying? Four hours is perfect. Right around the edges, the ravioli parts that are sticking up, they are not burnt. Nothing stuck bad around the edges. Four hours on low is perfect. Friends, this right here is so delicious. I swear it is right up there with my regular old homemade lasagna. It's just as good. And it's turned off cold. We're in one of our five winters here in East Tennessee. This one might be red bud because the red buds are blooming. But this hit the spot. It was warm and cozy filling and delicious. It had so much flavor. Just taking those extra steps with the seasonings and browning up a little ground beef really took this one over the top. I hope that what I was trying to get across in this video has come across that, you know, it's okay to be minimal. I'm very minimal in the kitchen, but sometimes just throwing a few extra seasonings in or browning up some ground beef, putting the right sides with something. It just makes the meal like square. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And I just wanted to take a minute and say thank you, thank you so much. I never take for granted that you all invite me into your home every week. It blesses my heart to get to do this. And you continue to just amaze me with your warmth, your love, and your community for me and for one another in these comments. I love you guys, and it's an honor and a privilege to be with you every week. Thank you so much for being here. If you have not seen some of my other Crock-Pot videos, I'll throw one of those up on the screen for you. And guys, until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.